Hello and welcome to Crafting a Revolution, the podcast. My name is Katie Freeman and I am your host. Every week I am bringing you two episodes with interviews of female and non-binary makers of all kinds. And today's guest is Tristina of Gourds by Fafa. And I first stumbled across uh, Tristina's account on Instagram and really fell in love with her carved gourd lamps uh, that have these really intricate patterns carved into them. And with the light shining through, it just makes amazing and soothing um, shapes on the wall. So I knew I really wanted to chat with her and get her on the podcast. So, so happy to have her as the guest for today. Before we hop into the interview with her, I want to give a big shout out and thanks to the patrons over on Patreon. So thank you so much, Katie of Women of Woodworking, Kevin Lefty's Woodshop, Christy Twisted Twine, Jeremy, Jeremy Spies, Sammy Go Sammy V, Sven Dorsize Workshop, Rachel Moody Makes, Bonnie Tool Mom, Bonnie Tool Mom Store.com, Laura Oakley Soap Company. Mary Lou, made by Mary Lou, Brandy, Studio, Obey, Lee, The Rainbow Carver, Ellen, Little Bear Furniture, and Ethan, Ethan Carter Designs. Thank you all so very much for your continued and ongoing support, helping me to produce two episodes a week, every week. If you would like to get your name added to the li this list, you sure can. Just head on over to patreon.com forward slash crafting revolution and hop on uh join the revolution there and you'll get your name added to the list that i say thanks to uh, at the start of every episode every week um also i want to say before we hop in with tristina that i have a goal that i want to get to ten thousand downloads a month of the podcast right now averaging between right around 2,500 downloads a month. So need to crank that up about four times, try to hit that 10,000 downloads a month mark. And I would really appreciate your help in that. What I'm asking you guys to do is just to share with two people that don't know about the podcast, let them know about the podcast, let them know what you enjoy about it, uh, who you enjoy listening to, all that great stuff. And let's see if we can hit that 10,000 download mark. All right, with no further ado, here is Tristina. Start recording. Um, all right, well, I do uh, like to have my guests introduce themselves. So can you do that for me? Yes, I can. Um, my name is Tristina Fafasaba. I am originally from Ghana uh, in West Africa. Um, and I've been a good artist this July will be five years now. Um, yeah, my background is in theater. That's what I did my bachelor's and master's in. I'm a full divisor. So I work with the Baltimore uh, theater community, uh, submersive production, but I discovered God art and it's taking me more and more and more <laughs> away from theater. But yes, that's just it for me. Okay. And I'm definitely enjoying getting to see the gourds behind you. <laughs> yes, yes, it is strategic. I yes. Strategic. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I guess I kind of want to maybe dive in a little bit on all of that and ask like, okay, so you grew up in Ghana. What was like, what was that experience there? What, what things were you interested in as a child? So I was a very shy child. I was extremely shy. Um, all I did was smile when I was growing up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is how I found out when I grew up that it was a way a nervous, they call it nervous tick or something like that when I get, yeah, that's the only thing I knew to do. So people wondered about that. Never talk, you know, that's all I did. Um, however, I found that I did want to be featured featured in mm -hmm. our I, I used to be catholic my grandpa was catholic mm -hmm. so i used to go and then they used to do plays um when i was young i joined oh i played the trumpet too so i joined okay. the brass band uh with that 
But I really liked it when kids would go up there and uh, and do like be, do a play, like Jesus plays and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, but I was too shy to say anything. So I was always lurking in the background. <laughs> 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 and that was the same for primary school. We would do plays and I would be, we call it Walker Pass, you know, background actor. Huh? So mm-hmm. I would do that. And then somehow when I got to senior high school, I had this crazy guy. I don't know what he saw in me. It wasn't like a dating thing or anything like that, but he always bothered me. He went and volunteered me to be like the school prefect. I don't know how it's called over here. Okay. Like, yeah. The head of the student body or something yeah. like that. Yep. Yeah. Volunteered me, campaigned all by himself and made me win. <laughs> so, <laughs> so from that time, people began to know me and I read art. And so that kept pushing me more and more to literature. And I decided to go do theater. I wanted to do law too. But in the school, you had to have a first degree before you can do law. And mm-hmm. I said, okay, since I love theater and acting, I'm going to and directing, I, I was going to, well, I found out I loved directing when I went to school. I was going to do that also. So I went into school, uh, got into a lot of dancing and directing. And then um, I did TV. I, I've done TV directing before moving here. So I did all that. And I was like, hmm, law school, huh? Yeah, I didn't. I just, <laughs> I did, I did, I did, I did law school. <laughs> and then came to do my master's here. I, I live in the Baltimore area. Uh, we have a great school here. Um Towson. Mm-hmm. So I found, yeah, they, they have an MFA program, Master of Fine Arts program. It's all about experimental theater, doing theater from everything but text, like the traditional way. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. So I got to play with some things. What I do need to mention as far as boards go um, is that in primary school, we had vocational skills class. Um, the choices were tie dye, cooking, and God art. So guess what I chose? I chose God <laughs> art. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and all we had to do was um, the gods over there grew on trees. They, they mm-hmm. had trees. So they were these heavy round things that our teacher taught us to like pluck them, cut them, remove the goo, break them into shards, and then use them for lockets and jewelry. Oh. Right, exactly. So that's all I knew. And then she mentioned something about if you're really creative, you could make a jewelry box out of it. So I remember that. But that's it. That was it for God. Anyway, fast forward. <laughs> fast forward to after school. I want, I mean, I everything I do, I have passion in it. You know, I'm a very passionate person and I'm very driven also. So after school, I said, okay, now I'm a divisor. I work with uh, theater companies. What am I going to do? I need something to sustain me as an artist. Um, One other thing about me is I'm very spiritual. I'm Christian. I'm always meditating. I'm always praying. I'm always listening. I believe that prayer is a two-way street, right? You talk to God, you wait to hear back communication. So I spent some time even to to the point of discussing, I have a spiritual father that, you know, I discuss stuff with. So he was like, oh, what do you want? I can send you money. I said, I don't want money. I want a way to be able to make money. So I rejected his offer to send me money to bail me out. Um, I was very broke. <laughs> <laughs> so after all that thinking, um, I got to pray, um, you know, and up until then I tried a few things. I tried starting my own theater company. I tried a few things. Um, so I got to pray and I went, I remember very well, I went on my knees and I prayed and then I paused. And then it came to mind specifically, how about I make God jewelry? Because I learned that in school. Um, how about I do that? And then I got another thought discouraged me and said, well, where are you going to get that kind of stuff over here? That stuff is in Africa, none here. So But then I kept at it. It would not leave me. And then all I did was lift both of my hands up. And I said, God, thank you. This is it. This is it. For some reason, I got that this is it moment right there. Um, And I went online and I Googled Calabash. So a a couple of things pop up here, here and there. And I was like, "Ah, Calabash. And I knew that the full full Calabash was called God. Half mm. of a board is called Calabash. That's what they thought as in school. So a couple of things started popping up and I saw a farm in 
California. I said, well born gold fam. They're very popular among gold artists. So I looked them up and there I was, a heaven of gold. <laughs> <laughs> so everything, um, things I didn't know. I didn't, again, like the introduction I had was breaking them into pieces and making jewelry. Right. With them. right. That's it. Yeah, nothing more. So I saw they had some free tutorials. Um, they were selling the gourds, supplies. We used to dip a knife, a kitchen knife in coal fire. You see how you use charcoal to make yep. you know, real? Yep. That's how we used to, in school, <laughs> now that I think about it, very dangerous. <laughs> That's how we used to do our wood burning and make the designs on the shards. Um, so I saw a wood burn. I was like, wow, these stuff are expensive. But <laughs> um, long story shortish, I can talk. Stop me anytime. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I the, this D bag, sorry, of a friend of mine who um, um, I reached out to because again, I was broke and I thought I had a friend and everything. Uh, and I was like, hey, I need you to like lend me some money. I found the thing. This is what I'm going to do, but I don't have any money to buy anything. You know, I was a teller then. I'd taken a, a part-time job as a bank teller, uh, a credit union teller. Uh, but, you know, I was living on my own then, I think. Should I still have a roommate? I don't remember. But everything was tight. Money was tight. Mm -hmm. So I asked him money uh, to borrow money, not to like give or whatever. Yeah. Um, but he had been hitting on me. I had a boyfriend then and I told him no. And so basically he brought it up again. And I said, no, he reluctantly said yes. So I go online and buy the thing and he gives me his card number. So I'm paying with it. And then they tell me, oh, it's been blocked by the bank. And I said, ah, what's going on? So apparently he said yes to me and went behind my back and told this bank not to. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, so that is significant. But, <laughs> but for uh, you know one of the biggest lessons i learned is that uh doing this is that start from where you are with what you have what you have so i waited till my next paycheck which was right around the corner anyway that's why i wanted to borrow the money uh when it came in i bought a few gourds they gave me a practice gourd i bought what i needed to just start with um and the person I was dating at that time too was not, uh -uh. yeah. <laughs> so I took a gourd and I cut it out and I, I put a tea light in it because I like mm. the idea of light shining through. I just didn't know how to achieve that, right? Mm -hmm. And it was very hard. I had this flimsy hand saw. It was like a, this, this thick and it had very little teeth. Imagine trying to get that into well-born gourds from they are notorious, not notorious, like popular for thick shell gourds. Mm -hmm. So it was painstaking, did all that, put a tea light in it. And I took a photo and I sent it to two people, my favorite aunt and the guy I was dating at the time. My aunt was like, oh, where did you get that idea? That's a cool idea. So that was encouraging. Mm -hmm. But then um, my boyfriend at the time didn't say anything. So I was like, hey, did you see my picture? What did you say about it? What, like, what do you think about it? He was like, yeah, I'm not going to lie. That is just ugly. So, yeah. In those words, again, I'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> That's just ugly. Today, I appreciate his comment as much as I appreciate my aunt's comment because my aunt encouraged me and it made me know that I there's something there. There's hope mm -hmm. there. If I'd gotten two negative um, reports, I would have said, this is probably not my thing. So, you know, but I got that. And then he, I love a challenge, <laughs> told me it was ugly. I said, okay, it's ugly. I'll show you what's ugly. The next one that I made, I took my time, watched a few videos. And basically, I always... Well, maybe you can call me crazy, but because I did not go for training for this or, mm -hmm. you know, any, in nothing like that, I always heard a voice that was encouraging me, do it this way. I would hold my wood burner and my hands would be shaking because I never considered myself a visual artist. Mm. I, yeah. So I had a lot of fears, not insecurities, but fears in that 
I am not. And I always respected artists. I was like, how are they able to make that image or draw that or do this? Mm -hmm. So the next project, I had a picture of what I wanted to get. And my hands were shaking, but that voice kept telling me, do it this way. Just let it flow. Do it this way. When it came out, I blew myself away. It was a beautiful vase that I'd made, carved a part out. I, I don't know where the picture is now, but it meant so much to me. And I thought I, that was the most beautiful one I was ever going to make. <laughs> <laughs> but at that point, I gave it out. Because again, I'm Christian. I believe in, um, we call it first fruits. The first thing, when you make something, the best of it that you're attracted to, you give it away. Like you're sowing a seed mm -hmm. and be blessed in in return. So I had this choir, I sing in the choir too. I had this choir um, pastor and his wife and I respected them a lot. So I I said, hey, I'm about to give you something. It was a sacrificial giving because I adored that God that I made. <laughs> no, I did. I know. Like today I make way better ones than that. <laughs> but at that time I was like, hey, this is it. I'm starting this business. I'm starting this artwork. This is it. I'm giving it to you so you can bless me so that the rest will be even better or it'll be good. So that's how it all started. <laughs> I'll let you ask some more questions. I told you yeah, I can go. <laughs> that's, that's, that's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I recently, pretty recently discovered um, you on Instagram through, I think it's through one of the tool one of the tools you use the um the rotary chisels i think is what yes yeah is what i ended up finding you through and and i'm like you i actually like i've always been fascinated with the gourd art i think some of the first ones i saw was when i lived in um southern california and going to um a lot of the like Hispanic markets and like Day of the Dead stuff. And they do a lot of like the smaller gourd art and carving and stuff. And I just thought kind of like you, like how, in the, how do they even do that? Like, it was just like super fascinating to see. Um, and then pieces like yours, um, I only, I've only ever found one other artist that does the, the with the light coming through and the, that carved. I, it's like super fascinating and that's actually what's like um, what's led me to do some of the wood carvings I've done right. like like oh, things think. that I would love to like basically be able to do something very similar but with a with a piece of wood I just haven't wrapped my mind around how do you get inside it and all of that but um but just getting those like organic shapes to kind of shine through, that's like really awesome. So, um, I mean, you started with wood burning. How did you get, how'd you evolve, I guess, into the, the carving of them? Hey makers. So today's podcast episode is sponsored in part by Alicia Van Osdahl, who is the owner of Basil Blue Design Company. Alicia is a maker of all things, really. Her focus is on beautiful craftsmanship through woodworking, repurposing, refinishing art and sculpture. Her background includes 30 years of graphic design, logos, and branding. If you have an idea or concept that and need a creative solution or graphic design, you can email Alicia directly at Alicia, and that is A L I C I A at basilblue.com. Or you can visit her website at www.basilblue.com. And fun fact uh, Alicia actually designed the logo for Crafting a Revolution. So that is an example of the impeccable work you can expect if that is something you are in the market for. So be sure to look up Alicia again at her website, basilblue.com. All right, let's get back into the action. Uh, so to the, uh, uh, the lamp part, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So um, even though I would burn, um, the first one that I did, mind you, had a tea light in it. Right, <laughs> right, right. So I like that idea too. And 
I saw, I don't remember the name of the company. I think it was a Turkish company. You know, the Turkish, hmm, it's like stained glass lamp. They, yeah, you, you know, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, I found out, you know, again, I did a lot of research, you know, being here. I mostly have lived by myself. So I have time to meditate, look inward, outward, <laughs> all inwards. Yes. Um, so I found some of the gourds, like, fashioned after Turkish lamps, you know. And that was also, like, the reason why I, I get so passionate about my work also is that when I began, I did not know what tool to use to get what effect. So I had to do some very crude things, you know, go, inflict pain on myself <laughs> using not up to par tools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. So I had to, um, I don't remember how I began. Well, Wellborn, I got some tools from Wellborn that will let me uh, go in. And it was much later that I realized I could use drill, you know, drill bits or Dremel or, you know, mm -hmm. all of those. Uh -huh. So I was fascinated and I said, I'm doing it. So right from the beginning, after my, my vase, um, I did a few vases. And then the next things I went into was, I took our proverbial signs, the one behind me, like, this one yeah yep yeah that one yeah it's a proverbial um symbol from the akan people from ghana the sign of beauty that's mm. like I from, yeah so i took a few of the ones that were that meant something to me right then and put them put the design drew the design on the board and then started making holes into them mm. my challenge was how to light it you know sustainably or yeah. like substantially so I went out to Home Depot, Walmart, and then I went to get LED battery powered lights, but it was not coming through as much as I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't know how to do electricity. <laughs> like I don't know how do I manufacture electricity. I, you know, I can put designs on goods, but how do I make it, you know? So I kept looking and I never stop when I'm looking for something, I will find it. Um, so I kept looking and looking till finally I chanced upon another farm here in Pennsylvania that had cords, lighting cords and other parts that you could assemble mm -hmm. and put it under. Uh -huh. um, so I did it somehow. Some It's not as nice and fancy as right now. Um, somehow managed with that and some of the LED ones, you know, just to get enough, enough light to come through. It uh, took me maybe about two years after I started to actually get a comfortable one that is easy for, like, that is good for my my patrons, you know, mm -hmm. so that, you know, uh -huh. so it, it just went from there, really. And I kept searching and searching till I would find a secret. And that's the thing, too. You, It's hard to get someone to tell you. That's my observation. Um, in the gold artist community, what they're using. I've literally gone to people's Instagram and be like, hey, what did you use for this? I would say, hey, this is beautiful. Thank you. What did you use for this? Zip, you know? Uh, and I realized that somebody else, a couple other people who are just starting reached out to me and was like, oh, how do you do this? I took my time to explain everything to them because I know what I had to go through. And I know mm -hmm. that it's hard to get information out there. I guess everyone is pr protecting their trade secret was that what, I don't know but it, it was hard so yeah. I had to I had to dig it out even um the beads the Turkish beads or the lamps that the bead that makes the colors shine through you will see mm -hmm. I use it in some of mine I thought they were uh, how do you call those things that they, they stick on shoes um Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I thought they were these uh, things. Yeah, like the right. like the sticker gem type things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I went out to Joanne's and bought a whole bunch, a whole bunch of them to stick in my lamps, but I wasn't getting the light shining through because it had the the foil thing behind it. So I had to scrape those off just to give you an idea of what I had to like the kind of experimenting I had to do and then later I was like wait this is round and then I kept just googling a bunch of things and then something popped up and I was like huh this is what it is 
And then I knew where to look or what to look for to mm-hmm. get that. It's just, yeah. So um, that's how I got into the lamps. And people had, people that love my, the art, the flat out artworks, they do. However, I found that a lot of people are into the light too. They are fascinated. And I I really like the projections on the wall. So everything mm-hmm. I made, most of the, what I made, I made sure that it was projected. My second best lamp that I made was this butterfly lamp that was just, it wasn't too busy. It was just so cool. Anyone that saw it was like, wow. So that encouraged me and mm-hmm. I just kept going. So I'd make more lamps than the artwork Artwork takes way more time than the lamps do. Once I decide this is the design I want, I put it on there, I drill the holes, you know, I finish mm-hmm. it up and that's it. Um, it takes time, but the ones behind me take way more time because I'm very methodical. I have to wood burn, well, draw first, wood burn, dye, do this. If I'm going to do inlay, do that. Uh-huh. So that's it. So I'm going to lamps. Yeah, I, you know, I would say it's not just necessarily like probably gourd artists that guard their, you know, quote unquote, their trade secrets. Um, there's, I think in the, like, if you're called like more of a maker, right? Then people share information pretty readily and freely. But if you're like in anything that's more seen as like in an artistry that you're working on, like one core skill, you know, at a time, I think then people tend to kind of guard that learning, which is a shame because it's a scarcity mindset of like, right, if I share with you how I did this, then you're going to do it and you could take away right. business from me. From me, right. Which in the end isn't the case. Like, right. <laughs> there's yeah. way more desire and, you know, for these type of things then there probably are people who are making them and i am a strong believer in your people are your people Mm -hmm. meaning someone we could be doing the same thing but someone will like my aesthetic someone who really likes my aesthetic will will be loyal Mm -hmm. you bring every artist brings their own unique spirit their unique aesthetic mm-hmm. yeah unique everything to it um and it, it, there's also a saying that i find to be true that um if you the more you teach the more you know and secondly to a hand that is where's my hand a hand <laughs> that is open open hands can receive if it's closed well you're, you're going to keep what you have but you you will not develop also right so if it's open you can receive and give you receive you give with an open hand. So I get it. I, especially for how, for me, how I went through to be able to get to certain things like my God lamp, I was having, I was going crazy because one, one of the artists that I spoke with, uh, so I took two years to, to develop my calming God lamp, two years to think, what can my art do for people? What, so I studied it constantly. Mm-hmm. And I came up with a very simple design and it took me, or it took me close to a year to name it according to what I found out it does for people. And so I took time and, you know, spoke with this lady, she reached out to me, everything. And then the next thing I know, she goes to do, to make something, a lamp like something, and then starts calling it the name that I named my, 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 um, my common gold lamp. That that hit me hard it hit Mm -hmm. me in the heart and I was like oh my gosh I give you everything I told her where to get this how to do this how to achieve I did everything so I reached out and I was like so yeah that's kind of my name you cannot use that but I was grateful that she was gracious enough to step away from it and say that you know and leave it Uh uh-huh so I kind of get it for something like that but (sighs) Again, give and receive, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, yeah, you, you cannot go wrong giving. Yeah. I believe in sowing and reaping. You cannot go wrong with that. Yeah. So I want to ask too, because you mentioned like 
So you're using dye to color your gourds? Like what kind of what kind of dye do you use to get those colors? They're called ink dyes. Okay. That's what I found out. I, I get them from Wellborn Gold Farm. Um, paint. I, I rarely paint my gourds. As in use paint paint, I paint the inside. Some, some of them I can see I use some paint, but it doesn't lay for me. Mm -hmm. And also when I started, and I still stand by that, I don't see the gourds as a medium. I see them like any one gourd that I make, I go through a very special, like a very unique journey with that gourd, especially with the with the art ones that I do. I see them as what they are, their shape, their blemishes, everything on them inspire me. I work with that. So it's like we're doing makeup here. Mm -hmm. Not it's a medium that I'm making, you know, I work with the gourd to achieve it, just like I work with my face to, you know, that's how I look at my gourds, mm -hmm. you know. So for that, I like the dyes because they're kind of translucent, even though I can lay it on to get vivid colors, but you still see the skin of the gourd shining through. Right. I mean, that's how, that's why I use the ink dyes. And also it's very, do I say malleable? I don't know workable mm -hmm. working time is good well compared to alcohol inks i recently okay, yeah. got a couple of them and you put it on and evaporates i'm like what do i do I yeah <laughs> yeah 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 that's what i i guess yeah that was gonna be my follow-up question because i've done a lot with alcohol inks and um in resin mm. um so the resin right flows down, right but um yeah even um like I've done, I've created this process of like uh, spinning my bowls and putting mm. resin in them and then using That's alcohol perfect. inks to kind of, you know, add, right. Right. color it and stuff. Um, but usually where you drop it, if there's not enough resin there for it to flow, it's like you're just stuck with that drop there. Yep. Like it's not going anywhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the out, so the ink dyes ink dyes um they must not have that um alcohol element to it no they're water-based non-toxic uh they are ink dyes and uh transparent acrylics that's how they call them i think the the transparent acrylics um i think they give more vivid color than the ink dyes but they all are amazing i've i been don't see any much of a difference anyway so you should look them up um yeah I, yeah, I drop it. You can blend it. I put it on the boards. I blend. That's how I get. I get ooh, so many. I, was, I did a, a gourd, uh, like a woman's butt on a gourd. Um, I saw that one. That one was awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I went through a phase. I think it was during the pandemic. I made a whole bunch of them. Um, I visited my friend. I made one uh, for my boyfriend. I visited him and I could, I was looking at it, I was like, wow, the blending on this thing is so good. You could see, it's like the highlight, like the right place. That, and it's all because of what I, you know, that, that gives me, mm -hmm. yeah. I haven't tried the alcohol ink again, but they're sitting there. I was like, no, <laughs> anytime I've been spoiled. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, I'll definitely have to look those up because even when it's not on my bowls necessarily, like I, I pretty much always add color to my wood pieces and um, I'm always like looking to experiment with new ways of adding color. Um, do you find with the ink dyes, do they fade ever with like sunlight and stuff? Well, for me, I mean, I seal them and I, I don't have many that I put out I live in an apartment mm -hmm. um, and I have not had any feedback from any of my patrons saying this or that faded. I believe when you seal it, you um, wax. I hardly use wax, but I have wax that I use on some of my pieces. I use polythylene, mm -hmm. um, you know, either gloss or matte. But I believe when you seal it, the fading, it shouldn't be bad or it should, it should depend on what you use to seal it. 
yeah. but I cannot for I have not really tested that out um so I cannot for real say that this but I know that it is it's it seeps into the skin of the boards mm-hmm. right and then uh, um so I don't know it should should be fine depending on the seal the seal that you add to it if it's an outdoor seal it you should be good mm-hmm. that's what I yeah yeah just curious um because that's I guess where I've struggled uh the most right is like there's certain kinds of dyes that I've used um I mean, the, the term around that is like color fast, how um, mm-hmm. that's the terminology for the how yeah, yeah, of a dye is color fast if it stays and connects with that medium mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like doesn't fade easily. Right. Um, right. And so I've always been experimenting with like natural dyes as in, you know, what, like using cabbage to like make your own dye and stuff like that. Well, um, just, I haven't yeah, tried it before. Yeah. Just because I'm always looking for ways to be maybe a little bit more environmentally friendly right, and right. Mm-hmm. Um, non-toxic, especially yes. if I'm going to use it yep. like on a, mm-hmm. on a bowl or something. Yep. Um, so I'm always looking for that, but the problem tends to be that they're not as, color fast they don't fast, right? hold so I've had you know somebody like uh it wasn't even luckily it didn't sell but I had okay. it like at at a location and they stuck it in the like window display and you know within a couple of months it was like completely oh no, faded. <laughs> oh, no. Um, <laughs> I mean I mean I'd rather find out that way than right, like then, somebody yes. took it you know someone somebody bought buying it, it and yeah. going yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i understand hey makers today's episode is sponsored in part by toolmomstore.com at toolmomstore.com you can find any and all tool-based merchandise for all genders all sizes they've got mugs they've got shirts all kinds of cool stuff i have uh, one of the shirts myself that has the uh, hashtag woodwork her on it and i also have a couple of the mugs that define what and who is a tool chick. So super excited with the merchandise that I have. I know that you will be satisfied as well. Um, And also great discount for those of you who listen to the podcast at checkout. If you enter the code maker mom, you will get a 20% discount off any of the merchandise that you buy. So that's just toolmomstore.com. All right, let's head back into the action. Yeah, but it, it's still one of those things of like, mm-hmm. you know, fun. it's fun to experiment with and it looks great when it's first done, but it's like, I want to make sure that it keeps that right like, bright pop of color. It wouldn't hurt to test it out. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you mentioned kind of at the start, I think that you want to that you think you're going to kind of keep going into more of the gourds like is is your hope to make it like your full time oh yeah 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 it, that's that's been my goal for some reason i got very upset if someone said hobby to me i got so offended <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> i got so touchy oh your hobby i said no it's not a hobby because mind you the the reason why it all started was the fact that i was looking for a sustainable way to a way to make art that can sustain me mm-hmm. as to make a sustainable uh, living right now i work with uh, my credit union uh the one that the job that i had I've, I've been here for five years now um and that's how i fund my business you know mm-hmm. um things that you used to make these things are expensive Mm -hmm. (laughs) so um that's how I find it but I'm constantly working hard um I find that I need training which I'm doing to be a marketer because I'm my everything right now you know Mm -hmm. I find that it's it's more homey and more comfortable when it gets to the making I will you leave me I will make it till midnight I will start and keep making it uh but then I cannot just make it and let them sit here so I have Mm -hmm. to be well skilled in marketing them and getting them out there and finding sustainable ways to keep it going. Cause yes, 155% yes. Full time is what I want to do. 
So yeah. I'm working uh, towards that. Yeah. Um, that's the thing I think people don't ever tell you, unfortunately, like even, you know, even those like yourself who went to art school, it's like they leave out the marketing piece or the like how to sell yourself piece which is really what you need because if you're making fantastic art, that's all well and good. But if no one knows you exist, then you can't make any money. Um, so I know, obviously I found you on Instagram, so I know you're there, but how else do you um, try to get your work seen and find customers? I used to, when I first started, um, go for um, what do you call the art shows? Mm -hmm. There's one in Annapolis that I used to like and go to, but I also found out, um, then comes the business piece again, that I was not doing it right because I would pay money to be a part of it um, and just eat that money. I was mm -hmm. not, I was not like putting it, I didn't know how to like cost structure, that whole thing, how to price my 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 work and you know so i did a lot of things that like cheated me myself sometimes i'll go and sell the villa that's it i was like yeah but anyway so i used to do those i stopped for two reasons um it cost me more in ways that i wouldn't want to increase like i wouldn't want to incur more costs um i want i want everyone to be able to buy my art that's why i make them small large largest you know mm -hmm. Um, so I stopped that. And also if it's not an indoor art, I don't want, I don't want it anymore because wind have blown my pieces before. Mm. And, you know, I, I value this so precious to me for wind, for me to be chasing after them in the wind. No. So I stopped those. So I've, I've applied twice now to Sugarloaf. It's very, very like highbrow, <laughs> you know, about Sugarloaf. Yeah. <laughs> yep, they have one. I live near Timonium. They have one right down the street that I've applied to. They're like, yeah. So I haven't been able to get in that. But I have my Etsy shop that I revived last year uh, and it's doing very well. Uh, very, very, very well. I'm so grateful for that. I have my own website that I did uh, redo also because I, I re registered my business as an LLC mm -hmm. uh, right around this time last year. Um, uh, so yeah, my website is there. Definitely word of mouth. My friends have it out there. And then um, Instagram too. I'm actually working on, um, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, the other <laughs> thing, yeah. Uh, the other, oh yeah, setting up like an Instagram or Facebook shop, you know, mm, mm -hmm. uh -huh, so that it's easier and, you know, more focused. And then I found something randomly. I joined a group on Facebook that someone said, who uses click funnels? And uh, after I read into it and I went into it, I realized, oh, that's how they get me to buy all these things. It's just like, yeah. So I'm looking into that as well. It's various. I mean, if it can deliver, I will be okay with paying the amount that it asks for. It's like two something, almost 300 bucks every single month um, to be able to uh, use that service to do it. But I like the idea of, focused marketing also you know especially with my calming god lamp I, I honestly want everybody to have one because it's so cool and I didn't even tell people I just shushed about it mm -hmm. and the first reviews that came said the very same things this is so like calming this is so this this is so that it's just so much goes on it's just so good to like sit back at the end of the day with a glass of wine put on just one lamp and just, just mm -hmm. look at something nice and calming, nothing too busy, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm, I'm looking into going into that focus marketing and then everybody else, one of the things that I should say that I fought against, I found two good Samaritans that decided they liked my artwork, they were going to show me business. These are two big business people that have been very successful. They kept saying standardize it. I said, what do you mean standardize it? <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I flow. This is how I express myself. I'm never going to standardize it. They said, pick one design and make it small, large, medium, like, and then just yeah. sell that one. I said, no, I fought against it for two years. And then uh, my boyfriend now, um, 
I'd been, I mean, it never went away. I tried to be stubborn, but it kept, it kept on here. Two people had told me about it. So I spoke to him and he was like, well, why don't you make the ones that you still want to make? but work on picking one design that you standardize so that everyone can get that. That would be like the bread and butter piece of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's part of how the common gold lamp also began because I, I wanted to solve a problem, right? Or, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, I wanted to serve a purpose and serve you rather than just looking at it as beautiful. I wanted to have a positive effect. So I finally gave in, not gave in, but yeah. <laughs> halfway so I can still make whatever I want for the person that wants that unique piece but still keep that one thing going and mm -hmm. that's become the best seller I don't know how I don't know how it became a hit I don't know it's very simple it's a very minimalist design of all the designs that I've made but that's that's that do you ever do you ever get bored of that standardized pattern? So, here is the thing. When I have a bunch of orders that I have to fulfill, then I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I also found out that the more there was one time that I had a unique experience. I didn't have any orders waiting for me to fulfill or anything like that. And I was like, I'm going to just make them and put them there. So I, I cut out, I employed one of my colleagues employed uh, so we could cut out and clean the goods because that there's a lot of work in that. Mm -hmm. um, so we did and we cut out and cleaned a bunch of them. And then I took time to just put the designs on a bunch of them and I started making them. That perfected that design for me. So I made one and I was like, oh, this is much better than the last one. It's the same design and I make another one, but the shape of the board informs it. And I was like, ah, this works with this shape a lot. So I had so much fun uh, doing that. And I've gotten very fast at making mm -hmm. them too because it's one design I've gotten. Mm -hmm. So it has its perks and then it has its, but I think it's more rewarding, honest, to be honest with you. I think it's more rewarding than boring. When mm -hmm. I have it as a task, then I'm like, oh, let me get it over. Because I don't like things happening. Right. And then that part comes in. But uh, yeah, and also I just abandon it. If anything like boredom is coming, I just leave it and go and do something else. Work on an ornament or something, something tiny. <laughs> <laughs> so this is probably like a dumb question, but I don't know the answer. So I'm going to ask it. Um when you cl you're cleaning out the gourds and everything, do you have to like dry them? Like, do they? I mean, I guess that's what I don't know. Is like, how do you get it to that stabilized state? That's how I buy them. So okay. the farmers that make them, they they grow them and leave them out to dry so it has the wood. So it's not like the pumpkin when you're going to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I buy it. So that's why I target woodworking. So because it's basically wood at that point that I buy it. So by the time I cut the holes in it, it's the goop is all dried up in it. So I have to scrape it out of it, you know, mm -hmm. it, scrape out dried up goop and whatever it is. And those things can be resilient. Mm -hmm. How I dry, the other drying that comes in is that when there is a particular one that I, I really cannot scrape things out, I just have to soak it, you know, soak it and let it soften mm -hmm. and then uh, go ahead and scrape it all out. And then, you know, they grow them in fungus. So you see it sticks to them or whatever. So sometimes too, you have to just soak it in water and just do it. And then once that is all done, I towel them down and then just let it finish drying up again. It does. It never goes back to goop. Or like, you know, the okay. Soap, never, ever. Okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly to that point is uh, I was thinking maybe not even pumpkins, but just squash, like in squash general, right? right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like 
eventually that goes bad. Like there's just <laughs> oh no, these are I would. Yeah. They just would. And never, ever, ever. I try to, and you're not the only person. It's not a damn question at all. You're not the only <laughs> person that has wondered about this. They're like, what? So what's a board? So then I have to explain. It's of the pumpkin family. They're like, pumpkin? Isn't that gonna go bad? I said, no. By the time I'm working on it, it's wood. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, does it then take carving tools similar to wood? Like when you're using like the rotary chisels or anything like that, is it cutting more like wood? It is cutting exactly wood. And, okay. you know, I have to gear up. I have to wear my mask, yeah. wear everything. It makes dust, a lot of dust. Um, it's just, so I use Dremel and I use mm -hmm. Fordham which I was privileged to buy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I use Fordham, Dremel, and what else? Sometimes I do hand, hand carving and rotary chisel. Ooh, I like that stuff. That stuff is amazing. Uh, so I like the birds from there, or the chisel from there mm -hmm. too. Uh, yeah, it's just wood and it makes dust, like wood, literally. It's so, see, so fascinating. I could, <laughs> I might have to try a gourd yeah. someday. <laughs> no, I was going to say try a gourd. They yeah. are fascinating. They are, um, yeah, they are. I, I'm never leaving them. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you girls. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm paying attention to the time. And yes. I want to just give you a chance um, as we're coming up to the end of our time to let people know all the ways that you would like them to find you and find your work. So um, let me just pay you compliment before I do that. Um, I like I like your work. Um, I greatly admire what you do. I keep telling Amy carpenter that I meet that can I come apprentice with you because I want a workshop I want I love I just fell in love with woodworking somehow working with boards and I love what you do with the power tools the carving everything so I come anytime I see you post something I'm like yes yes and then that lamp that you gave away you made a, it changes life oh it's so great so great amazing I greatly admire I want a workshop with surrounded by wood and boards <laughs> Uh, when I get my own place, I'm going to work more with resin too, with the gourds, because mm -hmm. I can't do that here too much, too much anyway. But yes, this is how to find me. Um, the name of my business or my handles are Gourds by Fafa. That's G-O-U-R-D-S <laughs> by and Fafa is my middle name. It means peace. Uh, so by Fafa on um, Etsy, you know, Etsy, when you're searching for it, you don't put spaces in it. So it's just Gourds mm. by Fafa all as one. On Instagram, I am Gourds by Fafa. At Gourds by Fafa. On Facebook too, I'm at Gourds by Fafa. My, my website is GourdsbyFafa.com. So I try to keep it two out so words <laughs> by Fafa. if you remember my name Fafa words by Fafa that's how you find me awesome and I will make sure the links uh to all of those are included with the show notes uh to make it extra easy for everybody to find you um and in the meantime I will enjoy continuing to follow along and see all that you post because I love all of your pieces thank um, you so much thanks mm -hmm. All right. So again, that was Trustina of Gourds by Papa, and I will include the links on how you can follow along with her and check out her awesome work in the description for today's episode. So just find that in whatever podcast app you're listening on, or if you're watching this on YouTube, check the description down below for those links. If you enjoyed today's episode and any of the previous episodes, please remember to hit subscribe, and head on over to iTunes and the five-star review. All of that's going to help us get to those 10,000 downloads per month. So a reminder, please, please, please share with a friend, share with at least two, five, 10, maybe more. Any of it helps uh, to get more people listening to the stories of these amazing makers. 
All right, so when I am not doing interviews and producing podcast episodes, you can find me designing and making furniture and other home decor at freemanfurnishings.com and at Freeman Furnishings across most of the social media platforms. I am active pretty close to daily on Instagram and TikTok. So go look for me there at Freeman Furnishings. Uh, Say hi and um, let me know that you listen to the podcast. I always love hearing that. All right. So it's middle of the week. I hope you all are having a fantastic week and let's go out there and craft a revolution. Solution for the toxic masculinity. Pollution is the constant evolution. Of-